Watch this video to see how I make these mini sourdough loaves. They can be used as individual loaves or as bread bowls for soup. First, you're going to add 200 grams of active sourdough starter to a large mixing bowl. Then you're going to add in 1,000 grams of filtered water. I do heat mine up to about 78 degrees just to help speed up the fermentation process. I then mix the water and starter together with a silicone spatula just to get it evenly distributed all throughout the water. Then I add in 22 grams of sea salt and finally 1,000 grams of strong bread flour. Mix all of that together. I like to use a Danish dough hook. I find that it mixes everything the easiest. This is gonna take a good three to five minutes to get all of the flour fully hydrated. Just be patient and take a break for a minute if you need to. After you have all of your flour fully hydrated, cover your bowl with a damp towel and let it rest for one hour. Next, you're going to start stretch and folds. Reach your hand into the dough, pull it up and over itself, spin the bowl, and repeat. You'll do this all the way around the entire bowl, and then cover your dough again with a damp towel and let it rest for 30 minutes. You're going to stretch and fold the dough every 30 minutes for a total of two hours. So you'll end up doing four full rounds of stretch and folds on your dough. With each set of stretch and folds, you'll notice your dough becoming smoother and smoother, and you may start to notice some fermentation bubbles. This is a great sign. Here I'm going to show you a folding method that you can do in place of stretch and folds. This is called a coil fold. You'll reach your hand into the bowl, pull up the dough, and tuck it under itself. Then spin the bowl and do the same thing on the other side. You're lifting up and then tucking the bottom of the dough under itself. Then spin the bowl 90 degrees and do the same thing on the other side. I turn my bowl sideways so that you can see how the bottom is curling up under itself a little bit better. I like to do these coil folds for my third and fourth round of stretch and folds. I just find it really helps to get the dough really smooth on the top. After your fourth set of stretch and folds, leave the dough to rest on the counter for at least one additional hour. It may need to rest longer depending on the temperature of your house. These fermentation bubbles are a great sign that the dough is ready. Flip your bowl over and let the dough naturally release. Sometimes it takes a minute. Then you're going to divide your dough. I like to put some water on my bench scraper to keep the dough from sticking. Divide your dough into six to eight pieces, each about 300 grams. Next, you're gonna pre-shape each of your little dough pieces. So flip it over onto the counter and use your bench scraper to help gently pull the dough into the shape of a rectangle. It doesn't need to be perfect and you don't wanna pull it too thin that the dough is tearing. Just do your best to stretch it out into a rectangle. Then you're going to grab each of the long sides of the rectangle and fold it in on itself about half of the way into the dough on the first one and then same thing on the other side. Then you're going to take the top of the short end, fold that down about halfway, grab the bottom piece, fold that up, roll the dough over, and then you're going to push and pull the dough on the counter to form it into a ball. Imagine you're moving the dough in the shape of a candy cane, pushing up and then over and down slightly. This creates some tension on the dough and just helps seal the bottom. Do this with each of your dough pieces and then rest them covered on the counter for 30 minutes. Now we're ready for final shaping. Using your bench scraper, grab one dough ball, flip it over onto the counter. Then you're gonna grab the top part of the dough, pull it up, push it down and tuck into the middle. Grab each of the sides and fold them over like a little hug on the loaf. 
Then grab the bottom piece, pull that up, tuck it over, roll the dough over, and same thing, you're gonna do that candy cane motion to push and pull the dough. This is gonna create tension on the dough and get a really nice tight surface. Don't pull it so tight that you tear the dough. Then you're gonna flip your dough over and into a banneton. Repeat this process with each one of your dough balls. You'll want them to rest for at least five minutes in the banneton, so do all of these first and then we'll move on to the next step. If the dough is sticking slightly, you can use your bench scraper to help release it. Once you have all of your dough shaped and into bannetons, we're going to do one last step to build a little more surface tension. Pinch the edge of your dough, pull it up and tuck into the middle. Repeat this all the way around each one of the loaves. This will help us when scoring our dough and help give us a nice oven spring. Then you're going to sprinkle each one of the loaves with some brown rice flour and place it in a Ziploc bag and then you're going to refrigerate these overnight. The next morning when you're ready to bake, preheat your oven with a Dutch oven inside at 450 degrees for one hour. Take one or two loaves of your dough out of the fridge and flip it out of its banneton onto a piece of parchment paper. Then you're going to score your dough with whatever design that you choose. For more detailed scoring, I like to place my dough in the freezer for about 30 minutes before I take it out of its banneton. You always want to do your detailed decorative scoring first and save your larger, deeper expansion scores for last. Here you see me cutting my deeper expansion scores. These are technically the only scores that you need to do. Place your loaves on their parchment paper into your preheated Dutch oven and place the lid on. Then you're going to put your Dutch ovens into the oven at 450 degrees for 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, you'll take the lid off the Dutch oven and bake for another 5 to 10 minutes until they're nice and golden brown. You can serve these as perfectly sized personal sourdough loaves, or you can cut out the center and hollow the bread out and serve it as a bread bowl for soup. Comment below what your favorite soup is and don't forget to like and subscribe.